everybody and welcome back to my monthly commission painting vlog. This is vlog number 17. I actually know this for sure this time because I looked it up before I started recording, which I don't normally do. Uh, so I just want to jump right into stuff I've been doing and not all of it is uh, necessarily painting related. If you see behind me, uh, those of you who have watched this vlog with any kind of regularity can probably tell that there has been some changes. Uh, and I am not an organized person by nature. Uh, it, organization has to be uh, dragged out of me with a team of horses because I just like to let things lay where they lay. But this isn't efficient uh, when it comes to looking for tools and trying to find things. Uh, having to remember where I might have set something last can be a huge pain in the butt. Sorry, I was just making sure my, <laughs> my audio was recording. Anyway, uh, so mid-month, I guess, in um, May, I went ahead and bought some pegboard and some uh, hardware uh, and there's actually a story there too which I will get to in a moment because it anyway I'll get to it in a moment and so I just started putting it up and organizing some of my bigger tools and then I immediately realized that uh, I need more <laughs> I need uh, at least a bit more and actually move things around in here too and so uh, if we just look over this way, um, this workbench here, mm -hmm. this workbench here is the is a workbench that has been behind me for a while, and it wasn't very useful there. But I decided to move it here for this reason. Yes, that is my new 3D printer, uh, and I'm not going to talk about it in great detail here because I'm planning to do a video on that specifically. Uh, and you don't necessarily want to hear all the ins and outs of 3D printing. But I thought I would give you just a little bit of information about what I've been doing with it. Um, some of you may know that I've been working on this uh, carrier project. This is the um, X-Wing Imperial Assault Carrier. <laughs> I was going to say Imperial Assault Carrier. That makes it sound like that board game, Imperial Assault. Uh, anyway, uh, one of the things I'm doing, this normally carries four TIE Fighters. Uh, but in the backstory for this model of uh, ship, it was supposed to have been a freighter at one point. So I created... cargo pods to replace the TIE Fighters. And you don't know how happy that makes me to uh, that I was able to actually do the same uh, mounting system as the TIE Fighters use. But if you've been following the project, you know that I had been trying to utilize a local printing service through uh, UMass Amherst, which is great. I mean, the idea that you can actually go somewhere local, well, for me, it's relatively local, but, you know, that you can get something locally printed is, is very cool. But the problem is uh, UMass Amherst is not particularly local to me, and the process is a little bit convoluted because it's not that local to me. And so if I didn't have my own 3D printer, I would not be in this place yet. So these are the, I'm not gonna say finished, but these are the uh, final pieces that just remain to have some uh, cleanup work done and then paint. But I have, well, these are some of the iterations of pieces that didn't work for me. They, uh, it was usually sizing issues, trying to get things together. Um, turns out you can't make things perfectly sized. Like if this is a five millimeter diameter hole and this is a five millimeter diameter peg, 
the printing process isn't that exact, so uh, it requires making one smaller or making one bigger so that they can actually fit inside one another. Uh, and even my final pieces probably weren't as sloppy as they needed to be. What I've been mostly doing is uh, printing terrain pieces for my shop. Oh, well, you know, and if you want to see more of that stuff, I will, uh, I will show you in my 3D printing video that I'm going to do. But a lot of time has been spent uh, trying to upgrade the quality and quantity of terrain I have at my store, which is Greenfield Games in Greenfield, Massachusetts, for those of you who don't know because I've been told I don't actually mention that enough, which is kind of weird because it is my store and you'd think that I would want to promote Greenfield Games in Greenfield, Massachusetts as much as possible. But when I'm doing this is separate from that and so it always feels weird to say Greenfield Games in Greenfield, Massachusetts, but, but there it is. Anyway, uh, for example, these are some uh, Alaska barriers. These are these kind of temporary um, walls that you might see on a military base in Iraq or Afghanistan, for example. Uh, I printed up like 20 Jersey barriers because, you know, you can always use Jersey barriers. They're, they're sort of universally useful. Uh, and I got a building, and again, I'll, I'll show you some stuff in the 3D printing video. But it's been... It's been exciting, and the neat thing is it hasn't really interrupted my productivity on the painting side because uh, in terms of the work required to get a print going is very minimal. I mean, it's essentially load a file, make sure that it's set up the way you want it to go, and say go. And, you know, even, even this might take an hour to print. Maybe even two. I can't remember how long these take to print. I printed four of them at a time, and it was many hours. Um, so it's not like it's going to get in my way in terms of uh, painting. So, yeah, it's been neat. And the idea that I can create things for myself, for whatever purposes. For example, another example, display bases. This was um, my first try at creating a display base in a 3D program and then printing it out myself. Now, um, and then this is actually, this is my second try. Created a, a circular one. Um, but what did I want to say? Oh, these are not, these have been finished. So I've uh, used a lot of primer and sandpaper to make them nice and smooth. Whereas when you haven't done that, let's see if you can, yeah, see if we can catch the light here. You can see the banding on there. There we go. It's not bad. The, the resolution of this printer is pretty good, but you know, that's not uh, display base smooth. But really, even finishing these up and getting them as smooth as this doesn't take more than about 20 minutes, half hour. That's pretty cool. And that's essentially what I'm doing with the, uh, the cargo pods on the assault carrier. But that's, uh, again, I, I really want to talk about nothing more than 3D printing right now. And I'll save that for the other video. So if you are interested in hearing more about my 3D printer and my adventures in 3D printing, then Go check out that video when you're done here. Oh, and I said I had a, a story. So just to give you an example, because, you know, I really want to talk about 3D printing. Uh, the, the pegboard. When I went out to go get pegboard, I knew that I was going to need one of the pieces of hardware I was going to need was spacers to bring it off of the wall. Because otherwise you defeat the whole purpose of the pegboard because you need to be, have that space in there so that you can put the pegs in. So while I was at the hardware store and buying my stuff, I couldn't find a good spacer. At least I couldn't find it quickly. And, but in my mind, I went, you know, I could probably make those on my 3D printer really fast. 
And so I didn't bother looking for them anymore. Came home, went on to Thingiverse, searched pegboard spacer, found somebody who'd already made one and printed them out. So that was awesome. <laughs> that ability to just like, I need a thing. I print a thing, I'm done. That's really cool. So uh, in terms of last month's projects, I had, I actually had several large projects. I had another Kingdom Death Monster project uh, and those, and I think I've mentioned this before, but those are becoming a significant percentage of my work at the moment. Uh, and I know that, I think this month I have, it might be next month, but this month or next month I have another uh, Kingdom Death Monster project to do. So they keep coming. Uh, I also had a um, 40K project. It was all Zinch related, but some of the minis were from a, a company I hadn't actually done anything from their range before. And uh, I'll try to remember and post a, a note as to what those mini were, minis were, but they were definitely mastered as uh, 3D models. Look, I'm slipping 3D printing into this again. Uh, <laughs> but in this case, they were, they were 3D masters, 3D printed masters from somebody who didn't really understand the downsides of uh, mastering in 3D designs. And what I mean by that is that some of the detail was too fine uh, in many ways, and so the detail was just lost. You kind of need to over-exaggerate things if you're going to be mastering with a 3D design. You can't just um, do sort of realistic proportions for everything or else you're going to lose it. And that's another thing is like in faces they're the the rendered version if you look at the renders on their site They look amazing like the details like oh my god These are going to be great, but a lot of the depth was lost in the 3d printing process and so these things that were going to be great just ended up being kind of meh and they're no fun to paint when the detail becomes super shallow because then you just find yourself having to kind of fake it. I don't know, that's not even the right word, but sort of over enhance things with paint because the depth doesn't exist on the model. So that was really annoying. Um, but other than, and then I also had a, uh, uh, a fine cast piece, which Ugh, you know, I, I have such mixed feelings about the whole fine cast thing because with the models who were designed with the fine cast process from the start have tended to be really good in my opinion. But the ones where they are retrofitting uh, something that was originally metal into fine cast, those are so hit and miss. And this is one that was definitely a miss. Uh, the, it was, and I'll show you a picture uh, there. Uh, <laughs> the, um, the icon that he's got, or actually it's a, it's an iron halo, isn't it? The iron halo that he has, uh, is so thin that it, it will warp based on the temperature in the room, right? If it gets too hot, it just starts to spread. And then if it cools off, it, it'll either stay that way or it might go back in. So it's almost, you know, like a like a crude temperature divining device. Um, other than that, it wasn't too bad. It had a lot of the little supports that they sometimes add, which are kind of a pain in the butt. But but yeah, that, that iron halo. Oh, not only that, it actually broke twice. Because again, because it's so thin, it broke twice while I was painting it, just from like the pressure put on it with the brush. So that was, that was no fun. Uh, and I also did two medium to large size uh, Warma Hordes projects. Actually, one of them was Hordes, one of them was War Machine. Uh, some Legion stuff. I really like the Legion paint scheme. It's pretty cool. And then I did some Cricks. And the Cricks are, uh, I like making them, 
I might, I like making it look like they are spending time in a swamp, you know, so the metals tend to get rusty or dirty or otherwise um, uh, patinaed. And so that was a fun project. And then to sort of wind up the month, although this really has been the, one of the first things I did start to finish this month, was a Star Viper for X-Wing and using a custom cut stencil. Using, hey, and as long as I got this camera here, I can do this. That's my silhouette portrait. And that's what I use to uh, cut stencils with. Doop. There we go. <laughs> oh, now it's all, now it's all angular. That's better, okay. Uh, so yeah, and <laughs> that was, that was really neat. Uh, it's a really neat, uh, design. Just simple. It's two millimeter hexes. Actually, I think I have, I have the stencil still here. That's the stencil, two millimeter hexes. In order to do, yeah, it's not going to catch that because it wants to get my face. In order to do that pattern for the Star Viper. So what about this month? Well, uh, this month I have uh, some Mice and Mystics expansions. I really enjoyed doing the last batch of Mice and Mystics things. They are, you know, it's like painting fantasy miniatures with fur. <laughs> uh, I'm also doing the entire run of the Marvel game miniature line from Night Models. At least the entire run as of the time I took the commission, there may have been new models added since then, but it's about 12 or 15 models. And it, you know, it's something, somebody pointed something out that I hadn't noticed when the, uh, when the game first came out, but at least as of the time I took the commission, there were no bad guys in the game. It was all good guys. So you're essentially doing Civil War uh, when you play that game. Uh, and as I mentioned, oh, I do have uh, uh, another Kingdom Death monster project. Actually, kind of two Kingdom Death monster projects, because one is uh, a bunch of the starter figures, and one of them is just Spidiculous, which is that giant, creepy spider guy. So, yeah. So that's, that's what I got going on this month. Actually, I should also mention that I have um, a project that was essentially... A project from last month, but it is going to end up being a little bit longer term uh, because it's it's a little bit more involved. But it is the uh, Alien versus Predator minis, uh, and I have I have a bunch of them to do, but I've also gotten. <laughs> some uh, instructions on how to do them. And I think this was partly done in fun. I'll be back in a second. All right. So this is, this is most of, I might be missing one. Aliens, pred aliens. Yeah, I think I'm missing one. Okay, so this is this is the basic documentation for completing this project. So I've got here. This is the uh, USMC project briefing, and this covers uh, the overall paint scheme. <laughs> well, let me just read this front page. The overall paint scheme of Colonial, Colonial Marines is going to be based on the squad of Marines seen in the 2001 video game Alien vs. Predator 2. For the uniform color palette, see images M1 through M7. And there will be, there's a packet of um, printed photo reference that will include M1 through M7. And then, you know, we got assembly instructions and basing instructions and you know, finishing touches. So that's just 
That's just for the five Colonial Marines. And then there's the alien sub-project briefing. Uh, this is the updated alien sub-project briefing. And this is the pred-alien sub-project briefing. And keep in mind, this is there's a single figure. <laughs> this is one figure, one pred-alien. And uh, this is a tutorial on painting tattoos because you want some tattoos on the Colonial Marines. Um, and then, hold on. This was actually kind of awesome. Oops. Sorry about that. Uh, I actually got two reference books. Um, this is the Wayland yutani Report by S.D. Perry. And I think this one is based on the recent video game. And this is the art of, oh no, this is the one based on the, the video game. This is the Alien Isolation book. Both really awesome books and I want to get them. Uh, I also have the Colonial Marines handbook, which I'm not sure what I did with that. I mean, it's in a box. And then I've got packets and packets of, uh, packets and packets of photo reference. And so on the one hand, it's super cool. It's really neat that all this reference is here. And I know that uh, the client is very interested in the project. On the other hand, it's super intimidating <laughs> because every time, every time I pick up a mini to do anything with it and it's like, oh, I got to refer to the sub briefing uh, in order to get going on this. So that's been a little weird anyway. So that, so there's that. Uh, and because of the, the sort of detailed nature of all the instructions, it sort of has to come out of my regular rotation because otherwise it may end up delaying everything else for about a month. So what about gaming? Well, last month I did get into a few games of, uh, Age of Sigmar, and I started assembling models for Warlord Games' uh, Gates of Antares game, because uh, my friend and normal game partner got into that game, which is good, because I actually tried to get him into it like six months ago, so it's all working out. Um, but I stayed behind by at least a week at the end of the month which as you remember from last month, I was behind a week, so I didn't catch up at all. And with that in mind, I decided I'm not taking any days off until I get caught up, which is gonna take probably all of this month. And I've, been, I've decided to um, push off new work a little farther out so that if I need it, I have this gap of time that I can use to catch up. And if I end up not needing that gap of time, I can just shift everything forward again. And so that is how I'm going to deal with that. So I think that's going to cover it for this month. I am going to probably jump right into doing that uh, 3D printer video that I mentioned. And in fact, I expect 3D printing videos to end up being a uh, regular feature on the channel. So um, I'm expecting at least one a month to discuss projects that I might have done or the sort of ins and outs of 3D printing, whatever. But it's something that is, I, I've been really excited about for a lot of reasons. And I know there's a lot of people out there who are interested in this. And I don't see a lot of these kinds of videos coming from people who do it for gaming. Although I did find a, a guy who has a blog um, where he's been talking about his expeditions into 3D printing, and he uses the same printer that I do. So that's been kind of cool. So anyway, that's, uh, you know, that's what you have to look forward to this month. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure what else, because what, when you, as you know, when I'm feeling uh, time pressure on getting my commissions done, the videos tend to drop in terms of quantity. So 
we'll have to figure it out and see see where it goes. <laughs> Maybe by the end of the month, I'll I'll, I'll uh, figure out a couple more videos that I can get in. But that's going to do it. As usual, if you did like this video, click like in the video. And if you want to make sure that you see videos in the future, be sure to subscribe. And you know, if you want to support what I do here more, you know, on a financial note, there are two things you can do. Uh, if you want to subscribe on a regular basis and, and support them financially in that way, then I have a Patreon account that you can subscribe to. If you want to do one-time donation, uh, there will be a link up here somewhere uh, that will be appearing where you can do one-time donation for this particular video uh, or on any of the videos that you see well in the future because I haven't gone back and added that to all the other videos. <laughs> but in any case, if you wanted to do a one-time donation, that would be the way to do it. Uh, but that is going to do it for me today in this video. <laughs> Thank you all for watching, and I will talk to you all later. Bye.